Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name's Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If y'all are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that all of my groups and links are posted in the description below in case you want to check them out. In today's tutorial, we are doing another fun patriotic tumbler. The colors that I'm going to be using were still part of May's flock box, but the vinyl was not. This was another pattern that I put together that would still coordinate with May's colors as well as the vinyl. So I just wanted to do a tutorial to show this vinyl off. I think it's really cute with the patriotic girls and bows and glitter and all thing fun and 4th of July. I did do another template. I really like this basket weave template. This is from Ellie's Crafty Co. We do have a code which is DAM15OFF, which will also be in the description. Everything you see listed here will be covered in today's tutorial, but if you guys have questions, please just ask in the comments. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial, and I hope you guys enjoy. guys so I am just going to show you what we're going to be using before we get started these are the glitters very patriotic cherry bomb both of these are extra fine glitters this is patriotic Prosecco which is a mini chunky fine mix and then my favorite which is flirty firecracker this is an irregular cut hollow silver with some black mixed in it looks super pretty under epoxy and this is the pattern we are going to be using. I already cut out the template, so I'm just trimming the excess. And now we have our template cut. And I like to remove one piece of the basket weave before I apply it on my tumbler. This is just so I make sure that I line it up correctly. But as you will see, I still do not line it up correctly because I forgot to size it accordingly. For some reason, I thought it was already sized to the tumbler I was using and it is not. So if you purchase templates from Ellie's Crafty Co, make sure you size them before you cut them out. So I'm just using my cup cradle from Brooke, which is Cami Page Boutique, just to draw a straight line down my tumbler so that when I apply my vinyl, it will be straight. I am just trimming a little bit of the excess, just like I would if I were applying a full vinyl wrap. This can act like a hinge, twist it around, make sure everything lines up correctly. This one looked pretty good. So I went ahead, flipped it over, and we are using our squeegee to press down the vinyl as the backing is being removed. And it was a little hard to keep those little tiny vinyl pieces stuck properly to the transfer tape as I was smoothing everything down, but I made it work. I think this is probably the second template I have ever done and now I love them and want to make all sorts of tumblers with templates. They always just seem to intimidate me and even with this one clearly it's not matched up right but I do show you guys how I fix that. And if you're wondering my grips are from the tumbler grip I do have a discount code for them which I will link in the description. So all I did to correct my mistake of not sizing it was just move over the pieces that I knew were going to be kept, which was only three. So the center diamond I knew was going to stay, so I just moved that over a little bit. And then one of these vinyl lines on the top and bottom were going to stay. The rest were all going to be removed and glittered. So the fact that we just scooting these little pieces over slightly does not affect the overall look of the tumbler at all. And I did have to move this little strip over since I was adjusting the strip next to it. 
but it works out perfectly fine. If you want, you can go ahead and remove and discard this strip, but I like to keep everything on there or I will get confused. So we are going in with Artistry's glitter glue and this is how we're going to apply all of our glitter. If you guys have not tried glitter glue from Artistry, I highly recommend it. We do have a discount code for them as well, which is damn fancy. For those of you that have followed me for a while, you will know that I typically used clear spray paint or epoxy to apply my glitter, but ever since I found Artistry's glitter glue, it's pretty much all I use. I feel like it attaches glitter in a very similar way to epoxy. It evens out, kind of self-levels like epoxy. It's not like Mod Podge at all. I never use Mod Podge. But glitter glue, I would probably buy in a gallon size if they offered it. So I'm just going to brush off my tumbler a little bit, get any of that stray glitter off of the cup because I don't want it to contaminate my next glitter line. And then I am just drying this glitter with my heat gun just to get that first glitter line as dry as we can so that when we pour our next color, it's not going to mix in together. So we are removing our second line and I kind of planned out ahead of time of which colors I wanted next to each other. So I wanted my two chunkier glitters on the top and bottom, and then my extra fine glitters in the center. And this extra fine glitter is a metallic, opaque glitter, so I didn't really think that I was gonna have to base paint or do a second coat, but I was proven wrong. I think it was because this glitter is so fine that if I would have used Tacket or like a sticky sheet, I could have burnished it in well. But since I was just using glitter glue, I did have to go back and do a second coat just because I wasn't super happy with the coverage. Typically, I don't ever have to do a second coat. I think it was just because the glitter was so fine. So I just brushed off the excess. I am drying this line with my heat gun so that I can come back with another coat of glitter glue and sprinkle on another layer. So the coverage isn't terrible. It just, you know, I try to get it as perfect as I can. So I am just sprinkling this on. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. I'm going to brush off any excess glitter and then I'm going to dry this with my heat gun Again, just so the next glitter color does not contaminate. So this time I thought maybe if I use Colorfix paint and match my base to the glitter, it will give better coverage. But again, I was proven wrong. I still did not get that coverage that I wanted. Again, I just chalked it up to this glitter just being super fine and I typically only use fine glitters or chunky glitters. I don't work with a lot of extra fine glitters. 
So from now on, I know that most extra fine glitters is probably going to need two coats or use a burnishing method. But this is color fix paint. I do use this a lot as well. It is paint, but it has a glitter glue mixed in. This is also from Artistry. You do have to work a little quicker with color fix paint versus the glitter glue because it does dry quicker. You don't have as long of a work time as you do with glitter glue. So since I wanted a little bit better coverage, I just repeated my steps. I brushed all the excess off. I dried this part with my heat gun on low. I do have an adjustable dial heat gun. And once that was pretty dry, I just repeated my steps. But instead of using color fix paint again, I just used glitter glue. And I just went right on top of that glitter And then we're just sprinkling on our second coat of glitter. And I was really happy with the coverage at this point. So now again, we're brushing everything off with our fluffy brush. We are going to dry this with our heat gun. And then we are going to go in with our last color, which is Patriotic Prosecco. This is another chunky glitter, so I only needed one coat. And if you guys can see, I like to use a relatively small brush when I'm applying the glitter glue into the thin lines. It just gives me a little bit more control. Then we're just sprinkling on the gold. And I just love these colors next to each other. I think they're so pretty and fun. But again, you can still use these colors for other cups throughout the year not necessarily just 4th of July. So after that tumbler dries, I seal it with either a clear spray or quick seal from Artistry. I typically use a liquid sealer if there is vinyl on the cup. And once that dries, we are going to take it out to the garage and put some epoxy on. My favorite epoxy is Artistry's 1 to 1 ratio fast set. It is the best I have tried thus far i get a great finish you can use it as a top coat it has great uv protection there is no odor 
some facets would stay on my clothes even if I was using a respirator and then came inside I could still smell it on me and I would have to go change or shower but this epoxy does not have that effect <laughs> so I'm just going to wipe from bottom to top and then we are going to pop all of our bubbles I have a torch from CCDIY and I will put two layers of epoxy on this tumbler and then we will be ready for our next step. So once the second layer cures, I'm going to take this edging tool from Cami Page Boutique. It is designed to edge your vinyl, but I use it to edge my epoxy rims. So I just take my tumbler, I hold the top or bottom rim under hot water for maybe 15 seconds so it softens just a little bit then i twist my cup around this blade and that epoxy rim just comes right off super easy no sanding involved no dremel involved ever since i tried this out it's pretty much all i use to rim my cups and then after i get that epoxy rim off i'm going to take some acetone and we are just going to wipe it around the top and bottom rim just to get off any spray paint residue. And once we do that, we have a nice, clean, even rim. So now we are going to pinstripe our tumbler. I'm using vinyl pinstripes as well as nail striping tape. I do have a file on thedrunkflamingo.com that is a pinstriping file. It has all of my most popular sizes I use, which is 0 0.07, 0 0.05, and 0 0.03. I typically cut out a full sheet at a time. That way I have multiple sizes and multiple colors so I can layer them. And this was the first basket weave tumbler that I did. And I learned since then just not to cut the pinstripes until you get finished layering all of your colors. It makes it so much easier. So here I was cutting them when the color ended. So like I cut this one right where that blue started. And it's just a lot of extra cutting that you don't really need to do. So what I did on my second tumbler and what I think that I started doing on this one was just bringing that pinstripe all the way down from where the red started to where the red ended and I did not cut it when it overlapped a different color. And these nail striping tapes can be a little hard to get started. And I just matched the nail striping tape with the color that it was next to. And I think during this step is when I kind of realized like I could have just, you know, taken this pinstripe all the way down and then just cut it all together. And then I always just wrap that end around the striping tape just so it's easier to grab that end the next time I use it. So now I'm just trimming these little red pieces off that I don't need anymore. Nope, see, I'm still cutting them.
So it's much easier just to bring that pinstripe all the way down. So don't even cut it here. Cut it when you're finished applying all of the stripes. So for this pinstripe, I'm just using this kind of like holographic silver. I thought it went really well with the holographic silver that is in the flirty firecracker glitter. So now I'm just trimming off the vinyl that is overlapping that top edge. And then trimming off that nail tape. Still cutting that vinyl. So it must have been with my second cut that I realized that it would be easier just to not cut it. I think I thought I was like conserving my vinyl by like cutting it and using the smaller pieces. I don't know. Oh look, I overlapped that one. Maybe this is when I realized that I could just overlap them all and then cut them at the end. And typically when I do pinstripes, I just use two colors. So I may use a white and a gold, but for these I matched each top color to the glitter. And I really love how that turned out. So it wasn't just one color it was multiple different colors that were also highlighting the glitter and the vinyl that we used and i really love how it turned out So now we are just trimming these pieces off. And then I realized like, okay, I can trim these, but then I did not cut them correctly. <laughs> so I still had little pieces overlapping that red. 
and I was like, dang, I got to cut them before that red so it looks correct. So now I'm in the groove. I'm just bringing that vinyl all the way down. But this piece was a little short, so I just stopped it. And then our last piece of white. And I'm just using my regular gold for this, not a nail stripe. This is just my textured gold that I always cut out. And once we are done applying all of our pinstripes, I am going to apply UV resin just to the ends of the pinstripe. We have all been in that situation where our pinstripes lift under epoxy and then we want to chunk the cup across the room. But I started using UV resin just to hold the edges down because typically at the edge of the pinstripe is where it will lift under epoxy. So once those edges are down, they aren't going anywhere. So we're just trimming these little guys, getting rid of those little pinstripe pieces we don't need. And now we are going to break out the UV resin I like to use CCDIYs. It is my favorite that I've tried. I just literally put a tiny drop on it. I smooth it down with my silicone tool and then we're going to cure that for about two minutes. And then we're going to do the same thing on all of the basket weave edges as well. Smooth those down, cure it for two minutes, flip it to the other side and do the exact same thing. And then we're going to seal the rest of the pinstripes with quick seal, a liquid sealer from Artistry, just to make sure that that part of the pinstripe is also down. And I was debating on adding a decal to this tumbler, but I decided against it. I thought it would be a little too busy. So I just put the final coat of epoxy on my tumbler, and here is how it turned out. I think it is super cute. I love the basket weave design. I love the patriotic colors all together. If you guys decide to try a basket weave or use these colors or vinyl, be sure to post in my tutorial group or the Drunk Flamingo group because I love to see what you guys come up with. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group, my Drunk Flamingo Glitter group, or my Dan Fancy Tribe. All are linked in the description. Thanks for watching!